Okay, so we've finished uploading our code and we know that's all in. We've seen that the Arduino code says done uploading. So now we're going to go into the graphic user interface. So under KV Team GUI, we open up the folder for our operating system. In this case, I'm on a Mac, so I'll open up the Mac OS X version of the OSD. And that will open up. And here it is. So again, first thing I need to do, I'm still plugged in from loading the code. The first thing I need to do is to click on the correct COM port. And as you can see over here in the display, I get blob, lots of blobs. That's just because the font isn't selected. So I need to browse to find my font. And it pops open a window. And what I need to do is I need to go to my folder that the GUI is in, go to the GUI folder, and inside the Windows 32 file there will be a thing called a file folder called data, and there's my font. So I'm going to open my font and I get this message saying that it's opened the font and suddenly all this stuff over here looks right. I've actually got data here. Now that's opened up the font file so the GUI can use it, but that hasn't loaded the font file into the um, into the actual OSD. So the other thing I need to do is click on upload. It says please wait and it starts counting as it's loading each individual font character. So that takes a little bit of time to load up. Now by the way you know it's going because A you've got the TX flashing here red and on my FTDI everything's flashing nicely. Okay so that's loaded. Now I need to do the following things. I need to hit reset which will set some defaults from the code into the IOSD overwrites its EEPROM and then click restart and that gets it working again and now we've actually got um, it should actually be working and if I actually powered it up I'd actually see this display coming through my um, video ground station but I'm not going to power that up just at the moment um, but I'm going to go through a few things here um, make sure you set on minimum as board type. We are, uh, in this case, you can select whether or not you're displaying the voltage. I'm going to. Um, the voltage adjust, I don't play with here. You actually do through the on screen display, is easier. Um, uh, there's a really cool way of setting up the voltage adjustment, and we'll show you that there. Um, you do need to tell it the number of cells. Just as a note, if you're going to be over 4S, you need to change the reference voltage and we'll get to the reference voltage shortly. All right, so if it, this is going to be over 4, you need to change the reference voltage. Okay, uh, you get to set a voltage alarm. What happens is at that voltage, I set mine to 14.1, the default is 138. Uh, the battery indicator here will flash at you when you get to this voltage. Okay. doesn't shut anything down, doesn't do anything. All it does is it starts flashing, making that flash at you. Okay. All right, so, and that's basically all you need to set for voltage. We're going to do the voltage adjust, as I said, using the internal menu of the OSD later. Okay, video voltage I don't use, and there isn't an input for video voltage. So, unless you're running it off multi-Wii, don't worry about that. Um, amperage, I'm now, there's a new virtual amp, um, amp meter built into this code. So basically what it does is it uses your throttle stick to work out what your actual current usage is. So I'm going to actually display milliamp hours, how much I'm sucking out of the battery, and you can see the display for it pops up here. And what I can do is I can adjust this. And this is how many amps I'm drawing at 
hover voltage at hover throttle. All right. So what you need to do is do a couple of flights, preferably close to hover for the whole flight, and then charge it, time the flight, charge your pack, divide the amount of milliamps you put back into the pack by the time the flight was, and whatever that number is, you need to set that in there. So you're trying to work out what your mid-stick hover current draw is. Okay, It's roughly 40 to 50 milliamps per motor on, a, on your average Scarab airframe. Um, so I'm setting it a little high. I'm, this is going to be a vampire this is going into, so I've got six motors. So I'm going to start at 300 and see where I go from that. The zero adjust is how much current is being drawn when you're not flying. When you're sitting on the ground and everything's powered up, you are going to draw some milliamps. You know, you're just running stuff. So four is the default number. I would leave it as is. Seems to work uh, from anecdotal evidence. Uh, don't play with it unless you know um, that it is different on your airframe for some reason. Okay. But you will need to play with this amps adjust. And basically what you want to do is you want to fine tune this. And you, again, you can do it through the on-screen menu so that this number here, milliamp hours, when you go away and charge your pack later, those two numbers are close to the same. So you're actually seeing before you charge your battery how much current, how much milliamps you're going to put back into it. Okay? That's using virtual sensor on current. Uh, the board can run a real current sensor, but I'm not going into that because there's so many different ones out there. Um, and they're all different, and they're all a bit quirky, uh, until we've got a firm recommendation from Multiway Copter of, of a good current sensor. I'm not going to go into details on how to set that up. Okay, I'm going to use um, RSSI. I'm going to, because I know, use PWM. Um, again, because I know that's how my receiver works, I'm going to adjust. Oh, no, I'm not going to adjust any of the rest of this. I'm just going to drop that alarm because I think 60 is a bit high. I'm going to drop that alarm down to about 40. Right, for my own sanity, I'm going to click on right to save that stuff. We're actually going to set up the minimum and the maximum RSSIs using the on-screen displays built-in menu later. <clears throat> okay, um, there's a really cool way of setting that up now. Uh, so all I really need to do at this point in time is decide I'm going to display RSSI and I know I need to use PWM from the receiver I've got. You can set these in the menu as well, so you don't have to worry too much about this now. Most of what you do, you can do directly through the on-screen display, but um, if you know the numbers, it's handy to actually do it beforehand. Um, you can dis display call sign, of course. Um, if you don't have call sign, you could do something really crazy like name the airframe. So you can see in your on-screen display which airframe you think you're flying. Sounds crazy. It's amazing how many people have taken off with the wrong thing. <clears throat> or if somebody happens to tune in, they can see that it's yours. Okay, um, moving on, dimensions and metric, I'm using NTSC video, I don't like using throttle position, I do like to display battery status, and I don't reset stats after arm. Basically, this if, with, if I tick this every time I arm, all the statistics reset, now I might land the craft, disarm, make some changes, or move to a different shot without changing the battery, and I don't want the stats to be reset, so I leave that in the off position, and again, I'm clicking on right to make sure I've saved that. I do want to display my flight mode here in the example, and the example up here, it says I'm on horizon. I don't want to display the flight mode sensors. Flight mode sensors is this here, whether you're using the ACK, the barrow, or the mag. Uh, I find them a bit superfluous if you know you're in horizon or or, or angle mode. Um, 
I don't need to know the axon, and I know Barrow and Mag is only on when I'm in a GPS mode, the way I've set my thing up, so I don't need to, I don't, I prefer not to see them, I prefer to remove anything I don't use. I don't care whether or not the gimbal output is displayed, whether the gimbal is active or not, because I don't, I use a brushless gimbal, I don't use the internal gimbal, so that becomes superfluous to a certain extent. Vario is this little thing here. It tells you whether the airframe is going up or down and how fast. The barometer altitude, I like to have. I like to display the time. That's the actual flight time, which is over here. Now that changes. There's a flight time and an actual powered up off the LiPo time. Uh, the flight time doesn't become active until you've armed the aircraft. But I do like to display that. I love my artificial horizon bar. Uh, this is a new feature, which is the elevation marks. So if you go, I'm just going to turn the simulator on for a second and show you. This is really cool. The simulator is cool. It gives you a couple of extra bars either side. So if you're really going up or down, it's a bit more obvious where your horizon is. And that's just so cool. Um, I don't feel I need the extra lines, and again, I like to remove the clutter, so I leave that off. I do like the sidebars. I think they have a groovy look. Um, again, when you do this, there's a new animated sidebar, so these things go up and down. I find that a little bit distracting, so I'm going to not have that. There's these direction arrows, which basically tell you whether you're descending or ascending. Again, I find them a little bit distracting, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'll just show you here quickly. Uh, it won't show up in the GUI by the looks of things. Uh, map mode, you can enable or disable it here. You can also do it in the menu of the GUI. Okay. Um, moving on, I do want to display GPS. I do like to display my coordinates. I like the coordinates up the top here because it's relatively out of the way. I don't bother with GPS altitude, but you can have it as well. Okay. Uh, I do display the compass. There it is. I'm not fond of displaying the heading, so I'm going to leave that off. Uh, display heading 360 means you're either minus 90, you get minus numbers one way, plus numbers the other way, south being 180. Um, I prefer it 360, so 270 degrees is west. But again, I don't tend to do that, so anyway, it's there. And I always, I do like angle to home. Although you do have the arrow here, the angle to home is sort of handy as well, just as a backup to that arrow. Okay, and click on right. Now, it's a new, another new feature in the OSD is time. So we can elect to display time. Oh, you're gonna move from our GPS. So the actual clocks in the satellites tell you what your time is. Okay. Um, you have to set your time zone offset. Um, for good old Adelaide, that's nine and a half hours. East coast of Australia is 10 hours. West coast would therefore be eight. Yes. Um, you have to mark whether or not that is a plus or a minus. I haven't worked out yet which way that switch does actually work. And whether or not you've got a daylight saving offset and how much it is. In Australia, that's 60 minutes. Some parts of the world, it will be different. Okay, again, if you don't have a daylight saving offset, you set that to zero. Uh, it jumps in 15 minute brackets. Um, you also have an option to display temperature. We don't have a temperature input on the board. You could modify it for it. If you have a different board that can display it, you may wish to do so. I'm just going to turn displaying time off, click right. And that is my um, OSD ready to fly. Catch you guys online.